I work on really, really big fish. And as an example of how big the animal I work on, this stage is roughly about nine metres in length. It's not big enough for the whale sharks, and that's what I work on. These guys are the biggest fish in the sea. They're a beautiful creature. They're one that I've been working on since 1995, but unfortunately, they're, uh, we don't know a lot about them. They've been around for 100 million years at least, they're, or their ancestry goes back that far. Um, they were only first, but they were only first discovered by humans in 1828. And up until the mid-1980s, there's only about 300 or so, 320 confirmed sightings of this leviathan from around the world. They're a cryptic species. They're, they're relatively rare, and they're very, very hard to study. Unfortunately, though, it's been in our generation that we've sent this animal to become a threatened species. And it's through human influence. It's through fishing, it's through pollution, it's through habitat, habitat degradation. Unfortunately, we've had a lot of impact on this animal. But I'd like to think that we, we're not, we can get this animal from the brink. We, basically, what we need to do is embrace technology and citizen science involving people to learn more about this species to help with their long-term survival. There's lots of tech we can use. I'm, I've just come back literally two days ago from Ningaloo Reef where I've been working on these whale sharks. And we've used cameras, like putting a Hollywood camera on a whale shark to see what they're doing when they're, when they're swimming at the depths. We've put um, daily diaries, personal data recorders on the animals to see what they're doing, what their behaviour is, and what's important to them in the open ocean. And we're using satellite technology to see where they're moving to and from. But this is an expensive project, and it's one that actually has got limitations. But what we're trying to do and what we've succeeded in doing is actually doing a really simple project, and that is using photo identification to identify individual whale sharks, to work out their numbers, if they're still in decline, if their numbers are improving in a certain area because of some of the regulations that we've been put in place, or some of the, the, the new laws that are in place. We've got them protected in many other countries around the world now. And in fact, what we've been able to do is encourage people, members of the public, to learn more about sharks and help with their conservation. And we've done it through photo ID. And why, we, why it's working is that it's on the bucket list of many people to swim with the whale shark. Most people have got a camera. And most people can be a scientist and help us with our work. It's not just as simple as taking a photo and marking or tagging a whale shark. We need to actually be able to know what that photo means. Is it, is it related? Is that same photo you took of the whale shark today proof that that's a, a new shark or one that's been seen before? It's a hard one. But I'm very fortunate to have worked with uh, my two colleagues, Zavan Althamanian, who's a NASA astrophysicist, and Jason Holmberg, who's an information architect. Both of them have got brains the size of the planet, and they've helped us to actually adapt an algorithm that NASA uses in the Hubble Space Telescope to map stars in the night sky, where we actually map the spot pattern, which is like a fingerprint unique to each individual whale shark. We map that spot pattern and compare it against all the other photos that I've taken, or now hundreds of other people around the world have taken. And it's proof. It works brilliantly. It allows us to naturally tag a shark, naturally tag an animal without actually impinging on the, on the creature, touching it, or even putting an, an, a, another tag on it. And it, it works brilliantly. We've been able to identify hundreds and, well, thousands and thousands of sharks from around the world. And it's because members of the public have participated. As I said, this is swimming with whale sharks. They're a filter feeder, they're friendly, they're not dangerous, we can all do it but we need to learn more about them. And people can be shark researchers. We've set up a website where anybody from around the world can send a photo in of the shark they see. It's worked brilliantly. We've got people as far away as Mozambique, to India, to Mexico, to the Galapagos. People are sending in photos. They're helping us to map the movements of whale sharks around the world. We've got some great matches. I'm 
I'm one scientist, I'm not working in, the, in Mexico, and yet we've had a, pers a tourist in Mexico, a researcher in Belize, another one in, in, uh, in Florida, and another one in Honduras. They've all come together, they've all put their photos into the library, the photo ID library that we've developed, and we've been able to map the movements in around the Mexican sort of um, Gulf of Mexico area. It's been brilliant, it's worked fantastically. The input from the public has just gone up and up and up. We've now had over, um, I think, almost 20,000 in individual encounter reports from around the world. We've had over 40,000 photos in our library. Now, that was impossible to deal with if we didn't have the photo ID program, the algorithm we're using, grid computing, like, um, like was spoken of earlier today, where we're getting members of the public to, to actually donate cycles of their computer to run scans against, um, of that photo against thousands of others. And it's been brilliant. It's worked so well that my, the first shark I ever swam with, Stumpy, A001, I swam with him in 1995. He came to, I swam with him, it was like a bus coming towards me. It was amazing. I took a photo. It's the first photo in our library. He's now been seen on 62 different occasions by 30 different pe 32 different people, and we've actually got him in the library. It's brilliant. It provides us with the opportunity, this system, to engage people, members of the public, teach them about our environment and the, the species that we need to protect. And in fact, this system has got such potential to be used on other species. Already, we've done it on polar bears. Polar bears, you think, how are they unique? Well, it's the whisker pattern. It's unique to each individual. So we've got, we've got that system up and running. Manta rays as well. So we've got thousands of people around the world. And we're about to start on mola mola, the biggest bony fish in the, in the ocean, uh, leopards, blue whales, Basically, any animal that's got spots on it can be a candidate to help to engaging members of the public, getting citizen scientists to really play an active part in helping to monitor and ultimately help with the long-term conservation of these threatened species. So thank you.